Do you, do, you, do you denounce that? So I didn't. Why would I denounce that? They're not harming anybody. Do you denounce gay incest? Do I denounce gay incest? We're just operating on the assumption they have. There's a lot of ins and outs. There's a lot, yeah. Probably like hundreds at once. Hundreds of ins and outs. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I think it's fucked up that they did that. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Horseshoe Theory, the only podcast that isn't all gay and f***ed up. Today we have Oki's weird stories and Gokunaru. Oki and Goku both completed long projects this year. Both of their documentaries took well over a year of work. Both have a runtime of almost two hours and received over one million views each. In today's episode we talk about what it's like to work on something for so long. How to stay motivated, how to stay creative, how to lock the f*** in when you're in for the long haul. Have you ever worked on the same task for more than two weeks in a row? No, you're a bug person. So listen up and maybe you'll make a groundbreaking piece of cinema. Seriously, we couldn't have asked for two better guests when it comes to advice about this topic. You can get this episode ad-free along with all upcoming episodes and exclusive content at patreon.com slash horseshoe theory. We do have an upcoming tell-all about what actually happened during Dreg's experience on the Destiny podcast and that will be Patreon exclusive. Take a Vivance, turn off the light, and lock the f*** in as Oki and Gokunaru tell you what it's like not to be a lazy f***. I I like looking at Greg. Feels like I've been right. abducted by aliens. Oh, because you're like um, under the exam- lights. Yeah, the yeah. lights under examination. Oh, is the iPhone on? They're asking me about like anal probing. Yeah, a lot of times that's um. What are those dreams again where you can't move? Like you get oh, stuck. Oh, sleep paralysis. Yeah, that's what. People... You ever had a sleep paralysis demon approach you? Um, Laura Loomer. <laughs> Laura Loomer. <laughs> that's Damn. your sleep paralysis demon. Yeah. Damn, I've never oh. seen one, but I've felt the presence. I think. Really. Yeah, I, I, I've, I don't know. When I, I have this thing where, uh, when I sleep on my back, because I usually sleep on my stomach, which is apparently like bad for you, I guess. But anyway, when I sleep on my back, I think I have a subconscious like nervousness that someone's just gonna go, Hua! Mm. just fucking smack me in the face. Oh. <laughs> and so, but yeah, one time I remember I like really was tired and I just passed it on my back, and I felt like my body spinning in the bed, and I just felt like a demonic presence. And then I just woke up and I didn't spin or anything. And I was mm. like, oh shit. Mm. I was, I was worried that if I hadn't woken up, I'd. See a demon, but yeah. Do you believe in demons? Uh, no. I think that people are demons. I think that like we had this I discussion think, on acid. On on yes, yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. And so that's uh that was a big theme can, for your for your trip. That was what big theme for your trip, the demon stuff. Yes, indeed. What was what was the theme of your trip? What was what was it? What was your theme? What was everyone's like thematic? Uh, everyone uh, trips always have a theme to them. They always have a like. My, a, my theme was that I shouldn't be doing psychedelics as a schizophrenic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the second day of the trip when I was still tripping, I was the theme was, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna this is gonna progress towards me uh, being violent, and then I went to sleep. <laughs> it's true. I was there all day. I took a benzo. Went to sleep. Yeah. Like a little. You fell asleep on the couch. It was, it was sweet. I was like, he's all tuckered out after being yeah, awake right, for 36 hours. Yeah, right after I was like screaming at you like, that's never going to end. <laughs> I'm going to get violent. Yeah. And I was like, mm-hmm. it was the exact progression of events. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. You know, it's just it's what, ha- it's what happens. You're feeling better now? No, I don't. I, I didn't come back from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you're> still, <laughs> I'm still there. Uh-oh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Are you? No. Okay, good. No, I'm fine. That was the, that was the joke. It's like, oh, I'm psychotic. And then you start playing chess on your phone and like nothing happens. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing changes. changes. Like, guys, I'm psychotic now. Sorry, I'm stuck in a trip. We have Oki and Gokunaru here. And we've brought them here because we're discussing something very important today as YouTubers. We are discussing working on a project for a year plus and actually mm-hmm. finishing it. Wow. Oh. It is a crazy novel concept to YouTubers. Yes. Yeah. We did it, dude. We did it. We did it. We did it. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. I get like a week in. Or I get like a month in and I'm like, this is dead. I get a couple of hours in and I feel the same way. I, I, can't, I can't focus on a project for a day. A day or two is like, that's my limit. That's my upper limit. Yeah. If I'm doing something for a week, I know I've done something wrong. Yeah. I have a theory that it literally requires ma- a masochist to work on a project for that long. And like, <laughs> the thing is, like, I don't know, you tell me what your experience is. Uh, I don't know. But for me, it's like, the intention is never to take forever, of course. Mm-hmm. No. But like the masochism and yeah, whatever you would say, procrastination, but also, you know, inspiration. Sure. Like the, you want to see like the vision as you imagine it. You're stubborn as fuck. You want to manifest it. But like, it's so difficult to manifest it as you're imagining or whatever that it's like everything kind of feels like you're always fucking it up. So you procrastinated, and then it's like a whole, you know, cycle. And then you start enjoying the fact that it's like, oh, dude, this is t- 
this is I'm literally sacrificing my life for this right hmm. now. Hmm. Um, I wonder, yeah, because like you, you have a different perspective on this. I, you're, 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 you're a little. You have a bit of a masochistic edge to you, Gokunaro. Yeah, as far uh, as it pertains to making videos. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the idea of like you know doing like I kind of want to do a marathon now. Hmm. So I like the idea of like doing stuff like that, like going like I don't know biking across Canada or doing something really that takes like a long time and it's hard and. I, 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 I appreciate a lot of the stuff that he said there. Um, only thing is, I'd never procrastinate on that project. Mm. Never, I worked on it every single day for a year and a half. Mm. Um, and, um, and, but I did have a vision, exactly what he was saying. My vision was to make a movie, a documentary. I wanted to do that. I feel I did that. So I'm, oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'm happy with it. But it... Uh, I told you how much it, like I spent on that. Yes, uh, I spent thirty. <laughs> tell tell the tell the world right now. No. Thir over thirty thousand no. dollars on mm. it. That is a year and a half. Um, and it made like mm. six thousand. <laughs> you know, that's how much I paid the composer. Wow, who did the music basically? Well, I paid him four thousand. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I was never gonna make my money back from it. But I was like, I'm gonna do it. Mm. And I did it. You manifested it, dude. That's the name of the game. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's 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 begin by let's talk about the specific projects. We'll begin with Oki because that's pulled up. Zoom in. Zoom in on the cow video. Uh oh. Oh damn. Oh, there you go. Sheesh. Oh, I also changed the name and title. The family and, that had two <laughs> armed standoffs. Oh, you're at a million now. When, and did, one. when yes. did it hit a million? Hit, well, hit a million I changed, views. Million gang, dude. I changed it. the name and title of the video, and it went from four hundred thousand to a million. Wow. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. But uh, it used to be uh, This Cow Started a War, which I thought was a much better title. But this this title, um, it got everybody who knew what the Bundys, yeah. who the Bundys were. You hit the critical mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it is there's something so depressing about the YouTube title meta. Yeah. We're like, oh, here's this amazing title for this amazing piece of art I've created. And then at the end of the day, it's just like, fuck, I have to change it to like, the thing you don't know about, explain. <laughs> you know? Like, it's so fucking annoying. Mm -hmm. It's the most literal titles ever. True. Yeah. So that took you how long? I started in January of 2023 and I finished in May of 2024. Okay. So that's, like not, that's not that bad. 14, 15 months. Yeah. Dude, to produce, to do every aspect almost. Except two and a half hour long documentary. Music. Yeah, of a two and a half hour long documentary. Professionally produced. I also had a cameraman who worked. Yeah. 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 It is a crazy feat. Yeah. And it looks, it looks like it's like, it's, it's better than documentaries we've seen. Thank you. I yeah. really appreciate that. That's, yep. um, we've done documentary viewings at the studio yeah. and frequently your documentary was better. With the neo-Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. oh shit. We may have watched a neo-Nazi documentary once. One time. <laughs> For fun. I wasn't there. It wasn't that good. Wasn't that good. I no, mean, just, it was just there. images. Half an hour of just showing people like images of people and being like, Ashkenazi Jew. <laughs> Ashkenazi Jew. Yeah, that was a crazy fuck, dude. Some of it even makes sense. Like Peter Thiel. Like, yeah, he's I, not. Or Elon he's, Musk. Wait, no, they just start calling people who aren't Jewish, Jewish. Um, it's a modern documentary? Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. yeah. Huh. Look, we don't want to get too deep. No, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but um, yes, uh, professionally, very well, research. very well done uh, documentary about the Bundys. Um, and you worked on it every day. Yeah. Every day. Non -stop. Every single day. I, every single day. That's crazy. That's, yeah. that's, so let's compare this to Gokunaru. Pull up, pull up Gokunaru's big video on Sneeko. How long, so, how long, first of all, 15 okay. months for Oki, how long did it take you? All right. Uh, okay. So let's think. Uh, okay. So when did I actually decide that I was going to start making it? It was about September of 2022, I think. Um, and so that's. Uh, it was a fledgling idea, and it was I was ahead of the curve at that time in terms of like making content about Sneeko, and then suddenly everyone was making content about him, and so it and so much was happening because it's like it kept evolving and whatever it became a beast of its own. But uh, I released it February twenty twenty four, so about a year and a half as well. Mm. Yeah, similar so similar similar times that you yeah. spent on it, similar view counts plus million plus for both of you guys, which is dope, which is dope as hell. I mean, yeah, yeah I was I was very glad. I mean, I, in my head, I was like, okay, four hundred k. And it's at least justified, if that makes sense. Mm. 400k views. I, I, whatever you could say, it's like bad to measure it in whatever numbers. But like, no, I mean, I wanted to get like views, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm everything is bonus right now, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how it went. Yeah. Are um, you, are you green on it? Green? Yeah. Did you make money? Psychologically, you... probably not. But I think uh, <laughs> psychologically in the red. <laughs> no, yeah, but I think, uh, I think so. I, I know that. Uh, 
I got very lucky. I, I applied like 19 times for uh, to get it monetized and I had to like tweak mm. a lot because there's a lot of like buzzwords that will get it to monetize. Anyway, I got it to the point where it was monetized. It got taken so down. It got to, it did get taken when down. When you first yes. uploaded it. There was controversy. It got taken down for two days. Thankfully, people shouted me out, helped me out. Uh, and yeah, but anyway, at the uh, end of the day, yeah. Yeah, I think positive, but like very slimly. You guys are a lot like this AI generated picture of a sculptor sculpting a masterpiece. Oh. That Henry just pulled up. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. That's us, dude. That's Zack Snyder. I in, was, yeah. <laughs> one, thing this, one, one thing this prompts me to think of is like, in the uh, YouTube landscape right now, mm -hmm. it's so dominated by slop. People who just yeah. crank out a video, they like, um, I remember Noah Samson told me about, he was on the call with some commentary guy, and the guy was like, one second, one second, and he just like played a video game for like 20 minutes and like, yeah, and then uploaded the video. Oh, that might have been me. But yeah, yeah, that on. was you. That was yeah. you. Sorry, go on. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So it's just like, given the prevalence of that kind of slop and the quick kind of post a video every day, how, how do you guys, like, what do you guys think about that? How do you guys conceptualize yourself in relation to the complete dominance of, of short, quick videos as opposed to working on something for like a year plus? You want to go? Sure, man. I don't know. I would, okay, there's casual content and then there's like, uh, like, focused content if that makes sense in my head at least mm -hmm. right like there's stuff that you listen to passively while you're working doing homework uh, playing a video game or sleeping or whatever and then there's content that you like actually focus on right and the thing is is that like the casual content gets rewarded like way way more because it's constantly being consumed like just like it, it literally takes nothing from someone's day to consume it because it's like literal background noise mm -hmm. um and yeah i think that sleep the sleep meta is becoming a very real thing where it's like if you just let someone's videos play, basically, and you just pass out, and then it just auto plays, and it just goes through, like if oh, it's like a Jesus Christ. I think that the uh, yeah, like I think long, long videos, which we have both made. I think that a uh, big reason why they do pull off so many views a lot of the time is because like people do fall asleep while they're watching it. Like there's a few big videos I've fallen asleep a few times too. Hmm. H Bomber guy's video, I know I definitely like. It was like I remember it was like two weeks it took me to finish it a little, and hmm. it, it I probably literally like in terms of YouTube. Uh, metrics I probably watched it like 20 times you mm -hmm. know what I mean um, just from passing out but yeah that's pretty much what I would assume and also uh, when it comes to like we're if you're talking about real life events involving you know FBI or like if in the case like if there's anything like racist homophobic you're covering like weird people if that makes sense sometimes that will you know trigger some systems that like will mess up with your channel I think or at the very least like uh, can can mess with the video and so like it's not that it will always mess with the video you can get past it and all this but it's like it makes sense that youtube would want to incentivize not risky content you know what i mean like stuff that is not that serious or at the very least won't rustle that many feathers especially of like people you know in positions of power like if you kind of expose shit about uh, the fbi or whatever mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know it's pretty much what i would say hmm. well <laughs> this this is this is partially why we're so grateful and uh we're so, I mean, you guys as, this is like proof that you guys are real artists, basically. This is like, this is proof that you guys oh. are actually like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing stuff that a lot of people shy away from because it's, it's so hard and they are so addicted to the instant gratification of just putting out a video every day. Like there, there is, there is something to be said about that we like <laughs> associating with real artists who are doing real things yeah. as opposed to just slop producers. And there's more to there's more to the YouTube game than just putting out a bunch of videos and getting a bunch of uh, views on like a bunch of videos. Like sometimes you want to like make like one piece of art that you know when someone sees it, you're gonna lock in. You're gonna watch that on the main monitor. You're not gonna fall asleep to it. Yeah. How did we get to the slop era? Is yeah. it like because people talk about the uh, how YouTube has become such a business where people just kind of scale up to the point where they're just reading a script. Like they sit down, someone sends them a script, it's all done, they read it, someone edits the video, video gets posted every five days. Um, mm. Like there's that aspect of it, and the then there's the, there's the other aspect of just like, yeah, like um, Zachary Schmeagel's new video on fast food, right? Yeah. Okay. 300,000 views. Friend, Osmond, friend of the show, Osmond friend of the Gold. channel. <laughs> Osmond Gold's reaction to <laughs> yeah. it. He's going to do a documentary 1.5 million. Us. At some Ooh. point. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Right? That's, that's terrifying. Osmond Gold just sits there, yeah, reacts to it, and puts his face in the corner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great... Yeah. Can I, yeah. Yeah, go on, go on. I remember a few years ago, there was this channel called Brew, 
um it does like really pretty good informative videos and there's animation and stuff and it was a big controversy because it turned out that they had a team behind them. <gasps> they had people who were writing the scripts and doing the research and there was multiple people and they were presenting oh, themselves as yeah. one individual yeah and now that's just the name of the game where cool everybody one. has even like the most communist channels out there are fucking factories you know mm. like talking about like uh, how capitalism is bad while they're making millions of dollars which i mean i'm not listen i i have no i have nothing against making money or uh even going back to that other question earlier like i just kind of the way i see it, it's like i stay in my own lane with, especially mm. when i'm doing something like the um the bundy thing mm. uh, and other people can do whatever they want you know that doesn't have anything to do with me mm -hmm. it's, i'm doing my own thing and my my goal beforehand right now it's to make more money but before and even still now is like reputation and legacy matter way more than money mm. uh to me so i don't know playing the long game yeah. playing some long games instead of some short-term games i mean there's yeah. a huge difference between someone you know someone recognizes you on the street or like a, like a youtuber who's producing slop and they're like oh you're that guy or they like treat you with outright disrespect like you look at like aiden ross or sneeko the amount of interactions they had right. with like people who recognize them where it's just completely disrespectful nothing nothing yeah versus like yeah. Someone come up to you and be like, "Hey, I love your work. Well, like, I love what this you've is, done." This is this is this is a good thing for us to talk about because we were at VidCon and uh, both of you guys came up all the time as people with swag. Oh, oh cool! Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I, in, yeah. The, in the commentary world, people are like, "Where's Gokunaro? I love that guy. It was mm -hmm. so much swag." Like yeah. it's like it's in a different category than the slop content. Yeah, like, I recognize your face versus like I love what you do. Like yeah. you're a valuable person. Yeah, you know, so, huge difference. I appreciate that. I mean, I, look, I make slop content as well. I am like, I do understand both worlds where it's like, dude, here's the thing, right? Like the slop works. Like it can work. If you make it, look, it, it's not easy. I'm not going to claim that it's easy because it's just not. It's like its own kind of way of thinking and like breed of content. But like it is so easy to systematize, if that makes sense. Uh, like it's so easy to basically, like all you pretty much have to do is just set up a system, right? Where it's like, I, you know, research this thing for an hour and then I talk about it for an hour and then I send it to this person, they edit it and then I have someone ready to make a thumbnail. It's like you're removing so many barriers for decision making to like for yourself or whatever. So like and on top of that, it also absolutely does get rewarded by the algorithm. Like that's the biggest thing. Like you were asking when did slop start taking off? In my head, it was with like algorithm shifts, right? Like I, I think it was a big thing where especially around the time of COVID, I think that's... I mean, you could argue that YouTube was taking a more of a active role in like moderating what people could talk about or whatever uh, around like uh, before COVID. But like during COVID, I think partially because of government, like, you know, they preempted gov the government being like, yo, what like cracking down, uh, making them crack down. But I think that YouTube started like more heavily moderating people. And so they basically got to the point where uh, if if you're talking about Boogie 298 <laughs> or if you're talking about like basically like some drama that's very low stakes it's like you're you're absolutely in the clear more or less right unless you do something insane especially if you're talking about them right if you're because like here's the thing like i've been watching uh your videos bro and it's like you're getting directly involved in a way you know what i mean like at the very least you're like going out and talking to these people you are you know shedding light on situations that uh you know they've been covered sure but like you're adding a lot of coherence to it right uh and uh yeah that's just like that's like a, a totally different fucking league uh, than just talking kind of vaguely about, you know, a news headline effectively, like kind of yapping or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think it's about risk, bro. It's like mm -hmm. slop content is, it is, if you can set up the systems, it is reliable income. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, you can depend on it for potentially years, depending on, you know, you have to adapt a little bit, I think, or, but yeah, it's just easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and speaking of getting involved, this is the first time we're talking to Kokonaro since the last time we talked to Kokonaro. That was pre Sneeko video. We have not spoken. Um, well, <laughs> publicly. Publicly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you got involved. You got involved with the Sneeko thing because you tricked Sneeko into watching your video on stream. Sure. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I and your next few videos on your channel are going to be about that question yeah. mark. True. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Okay. 100%. Yeah. And those will be out soon. <laughs> let's, let's do this again. Let's do this every year. That I just think. Well, like, well, guess. like, when's it coming out, Kokonaru? Were you on the last time you were on the podcast was mid October? Yeah, it's crazy. It's it was, almost been a year, bro. It's almost been a year. Yeah, wow. that's so wild. Yeah, I don't know how much it feels like we have evolved or whatever. But oh, both both of you was like that time. Yeah, like, like mm -hmm. October last year, whenever the podcast yeah, started getting November, going. Do you feel yeah. like you've evolved since then? Oh, big time. Yeah, same. Huge. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like on paper, probably not that much, but like 
yeah i think i think a lot has changed yeah yeah i mean it's a very different position to be in how I you, was yeah oh no sorry i was just thinking about like what you were saying about like how we, it's way more consistent when you're doing kind of slop content and yeah. you're like you know it's gonna be rewarded i remember when i posted the bunny thing a year and a half finished and then i post it and then within four days you start to see the views go down you're like yeah yeah, I only had a, a week, like less yeah. than a week for mm, yes. people to watch this the, thing. I know. Know. <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know? what you're saying. Like the window, you just immediately the window's closing. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. you're like, I, oh no. Yeah, yeah. I experienced that as well uh, pretty aggressively because obviously it got taken down for two days, which just like nuked like the first two days or whatever. But then it was literally just like, oh shit. Like it's it's like slowing down, whatever. And then I was lucky to get shout outs from Oompaville, Turkey Tom. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. some people fucking hook me up. The podcast you, episode we you, did, you, the podcast episode like just gained traction as yeah. well after Oompaville, yeah. Yeah. You forced it. You you made it do well. Yeah, that mm. was, I think, re I really do think that. Like, I, that is probably the most brute force I have ever put into where it's like, this needs to do well. Like, I right. almost, like, insanely stupid. Like, I, this is the thing, like, people will say it's like, oh, that was so smart or whatever. It was like, no, it was actually stupid. Stupid as fuck. Like, it actually on paper was very bad idea like very stupid to invest like that much time energy money too like I, I i commissioned a lot of people to help me with that um into making a video about a guy who you know basically already kind of had the horizon of like penguin zero and whoever uh you know popping, popping while you were working on that video there were so many peaks and horizons that sneeko had yeah that you kept having to reincorporate into the video yes yeah. he like he had his fall decline fall decline fall decline fall decline yeah, he was like super relevant like three times, and then completely irrelevant three yeah. times. Oh yeah, it was uh yeah, it was a uh, very weird, tumultuous like, uh, and that's not even getting into the, like the psychology of it, but uh, yeah, it was stupid. It was a stupid idea in my head. Um, but again, I tried to make it happen, and uh, thank God that we pulled off like the prank because I do think that made a lot of people oh like once they realized they were like holy fuck what mm. that was cool yeah um, now he's on his his anti white supremacy from an anti semitic yeah. perspective arc yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like crazy. Crazy. You're racist you are jewish <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah, that. that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> baffling concept that's really great though that's yeah really awesome. oh, i really like it that's the real horseshoe theory. i think i think we could salvage sneeko yeah we could salvage him yeah open invite right now sneeko please come to toronto You're come invited. to the studio you can, well you can crash on our couch for free <laughs> Much as long as you like, well, up to a week. Up to a week. Up to a week. We'll get you on the podcast. We'll bring you out to Sneaky D's for wing night. <laughs> Sneako at Sneaky D's. Sneako at Sneaky D's. It's never happened before. Famous Toronto bar. Um, I should say I was watching your uh, video the other day again, and I was like, I know how how long it takes to like watch all of that footage, yeah. get the exact moments to build like a, the narrative that you want, or you know, and. Like you get inside someone's head like that, yeah, yeah, by watching hundreds of hours of footage and like meticulously making notes about exactly at this timestamp he said this, yeah, and then I'm gonna connect it to this other thing. You have like flow charts and shit like that. I know that takes so much time. Where some people I think might see that and be like, oh, you're just playing clips from something else, and right? Like, it's like no, that like ten of those clips, that's like fucking hundreds of hours of work. Uh, yeah, uh. There was a lot of clips in that that just people have never really like talked about ever. You know what I mean? Like uh, even with Andrew Tate, like there was some of his like uh, little pedo clips, like viral pedo clips, where he's he kind of has a little Freudian slips about like fifteen no, si a, uh, 16 or whatever that like nobody really talked about. Now I guess it's like people are like sharing these a lot. But like uh, Willie Mack as well was like very early with that. But like uh, yeah, no, there's dude. I'm not gonna lie. Like I wish that it was as calculated as it probably like felt watching it or whatever. But like. It was literally like bashing my head against the fucking editing program the entire time. Like it was, I did not have the systems in place to correctly, to like, like, I would say like professionally combine all these clips. It was literally just like constant shaving down. Like I, the meme that you showed of like the skull thing, that is accurate for that video. It's just like, it's just completely accurate because it's just like every part of it. I was like constantly trying because I did not want it to be two hours long or whatever, however long it is. Uh, I wanted it to be max like an hour and 20 or whatever, hour 30. But, you know, I got it shaved down as much as I could. There was like eight minute segments that I cut out. I was just like, oh, you were telling me that the other day. Yeah, yeah I, I, I went on to rants because like there's all these side characters that became more interesting than the main like Sneeko. You know what I mean? Because mm. that was the whole thing. He's like kind of he just becomes like an amalgam of all the people whispering in his ear. Yeah. Like very like surface. He becomes a surface level of them and they're more deep. So I'm like more interested in them. Yeah. And so like there was like whole fucking eight minute segments on some of the people in there where I was just like, this is such a deviation. I just caught it. It wasn't worth it. But I, 
I, I managed to salvage it by like making, you know, making basically my whatever point I wanted to make just like way more concise. But yeah. Yeah. Blech. There's like four, five videos, four or five Gokunaro videos about different of characters in this, uh, in this sphere in there, in Yo. that one video. Yeah. Yeah. That was the thing. It was like, you said this, it's like, why not just make like five, 10 parts or whatever? And I was just like, no, it has to be one thing. Yeah. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. Yeah. Like, uh, it's just, yeah, it's, I think it's like pretty coherent or at least. I mean, it's it's fun at the very least. It's like yeah. a fun ride, I think. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. And then, I, how many yeah. opportunities do you get in your life to cook? You know. Yeah, yeah. that's really, true. You, you guys both cooked. Yeah, mm. yeah. No, but, yeah, that's true. Yeah, here with a couple of chefs. Here with a couple oh, of fucking shit. chefs. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was gonna ask about interview footage, right? Because I didn't uh, do any like specific interviews. Um, I think the process would be kind of similar. To yeah, it. it's like just exactly. go watching it a bunch of times, getting really acclimated with it, and then meticulously transcribing it, and yeah. then figuring out uh, which moments will fit into other places where I'm talking about, because I yeah. want to be talking about something and then play a clip that's relevant dude, to it. Do you see it as a puzzle? It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle, It's a dude. fucking puzzle. Fucking puzzle hey, game, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know what it is, too? It's like, yeah. um, uh, man, that, I think that's the thing that took me to some of uh, the longest, really, is just sorting through. We had like, what, 40 hours of interview yes. footage? I, see, that's what I was going to say. Jeez. There's so many damn interviews, and I'm imagining that you're hanging out with them for, like, longer than yeah, two yeah, hours yeah, each. Like, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, days for some of them. And yeah. um, and then I found, so, in this, there's, like, the second half of it where they take over the wildlife refuge. I found, like, it's, like, um, 140p footage of live streams from them uh, taking over the uh, refuge. Yes. And Which, I went through... I went through like fucking 30 hours of that wow. as well. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was, oh my God. You know, that was, dude, that was what amazed me watching it was like the amount that it was actually like documented. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you see the guy getting tasered, right? Was it, uh, what was the name? Amon? No. Uh, yeah. Ammon Bundy. Ammon. Yeah. 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 Ammon, you see him getting tasered three times. Like that's cool. But then it's like, even uh, like the fact that these guys are like bloggers or vloggers or whatever, like they literally are creating like video logs. You yeah. Know yeah. I mean? Yeah. They're releasing publicly. And no, but here's the thing. Cause there was the, the, um, cause the criminal trial, all of that was taken offline by the prosecution, mm. right? <laughs> so that I had to find oh, re-uploads of that dude. on like BitChute and oh like my random God. ass Bro, fucking website. That's like the arc where <laughs> Sneeko's fucking channel got wiped and I was just like, oh shit. Mm. Dude, and yeah, I was wondering about that. Where did you... Uh, he, I was uh, kind of lucky. He he pretty much re-uploaded all the Vimeo or some shit. Oh, like, good. After. Okay. And then I was like, okay, fuck. Nice. Up. But um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of shit like that. Like, uh, yeah, but... um. Man, I don't know. There was there was a lot of segments. What was the name of the guy who got killed? Because that oh, Lavoy Finnicum. Yeah, sorry, Lavoy. The yeah. Lavoy was in in my head. He was actually like the good guy. He was which a is, nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He seemed like the most like level headed, and he also seemed like the most coherent yeah. in a way. Yeah, uh, definitely like principled. I got principled vibes. You could definitely argue that their cause is like questionable, whatever you'd say. But like, uh, yeah, man, I was shocked that like it's so insane that they they are. Like there's people in the vehicle recording, yeah, and you hear him die. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Jesus, I was like, I something about it. I was watching. I was like, Oki told me that someone, someone, like I remember when I was watching. It was like Oki mentions that somebody dies, and I was yeah. like, is it is it gonna be this guy? Like the one guy who's like kind of good vibes or whatever. Um, like uh, yeah, and it was I guess, but. At one point, I was thinking about making a second video just like focused on only him. Yeah, because I would everybody in that story, he is the most. Uh, likable one yeah he was like also a vlogger like that was the thing right like he was, uh what well, he, he was at least yeah he, uploading he, vlogs yeah it's on youtube yeah yeah exactly you know what i never thought about him as a vlogger but yeah you're right he, he was basically he was talking about like he had the issue with the uh, BL, uh, blm and stuff and he was like yeah i'm gonna stop paying for my permit and stuff and he made those vlogs yeah. talking about it yeah not black lives matter yes not yeah. <laughs> not yeah yeah the bureau of land management mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it goes without saying you should watch both of these videos before this podcast. Yeah. The absolute annihilation of Sneeko. And what did you call what did you change the name to? The family who the <laughs> that had two armed standoffs, standoffs with the government and one. <laughs> oh, Sometimes yeah. that's the better title, even though it's mouthier. What what clip was that? I don't even remember who that lady was. Uh, was so how do you guys stay oh, interested in a topic for a year plus? Like, did you remain interested in the Bundies for a year plus? Because, like, it starts off and you're like, wow, this would be interesting to cover. And then it's, like, a year of your life. Yeah. You know what? The, I think that's another issue is because, like, there's just, it is such a big topic that there are so many different things that you can get lost in. Mm. And I got lost in a lot of minutia 
mm. to the point where I I found I found a quote about a land swap that happened in 1950 mm. at, in a book, and I couldn't find any other uh, reference material of it. So I spent a whole day looking for it, and then I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna email the author." Mm. So I emailed the author, and he's like. Uh, yeah, I don't have any, any other reference, but you could probably find something here, here, and here. Mm. But it was like just this most, it's just this this point that I never even put in the video, mm. and it would, it doesn't even matter. But mm. it's just like, I have to find out, because right. I want to know everything about this thing. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah that, dude, I experienced extremely similar. There was, oh man, I was so stupid, man. Like with the way that I went about it, uh, I've lear I learned so much, man. I really, <laughs> I got humbled, but uh, I... Um, there was just nonstop situations where I would remember a random clip, but I did not save it anywhere. Uh -huh. And I would have to go back and watch live streams, basically. I remember did specifically, that, yeah. specifically with Luke Belmar, there was like some rant that he went on that I heard, I registered, and I was like, I'll probably not use it. And then I like couldn't find it basically after the fact, uh, when I realized, oh, it would fit perfectly in this edit or whatever. And so I, I remember I literally spent like a day fucking... Uh, just it was literally like three times speed in an editing program listening to a fucking live stream uh, yeah. trying to find it but yeah um there's a lot of stuff like that the biggest thing for me is uh the way that i make it interesting for myself is literally just oh uh, god there's so much like that's that's why it's like feels so, like such a schizo video for me like where i I just get randomly like interested in the Roman Empire because I hear <laughs> because I hear guys like Sneeko or Fuentes or whoever like these you know alt light all right guys talking about how you know the gays or the women like just you know cause the fall of Rome or whatever and I'm just like damn fuck I need to see I like I know they're yeah. wrong I, right. I like just off of uh, off of gut but like I need to like back this up now and I so have to get like, into the Roman Empire exactly yeah. so there's like the Roman Empire fucking deep dive and it's like that you could that is a total side quest you know what I mean but like I I justify like it's enriching it's interesting I like it whatever and it does I think it does like elevate the video but it's literally such a side quest um and I did the same with like characters whatever like it's literally just constantly for me it was finding ways to like give myself dopamine mm. you know by deviating right um the edits all the schizo edits it's literally just like I'm just like so bored editing I just need to think of something novel yeah mm. yeah how how many points I feel like a lot of uh a lot of artists starting out have this misconception that if you're making a great piece of art you're going to be motivated the entire time because it's so, like, you're so passionate about it. Yeah. No. Which just isn't true, right? I've felt that once, but... You feel it briefly. Like, it's you have, like, like oh, that was, like, you yeah. have these click moments, but, like, mm -hmm. most of the time, it's like, I don't want to fucking do this. Yeah. Right? Like, how many times when you're, like, working on these things are you, like, Dude. fuck this, bad idea, I'm stupid, you this is a waste of my time, uh, right? You answer first, bro. I wanted, I was gonna, this is a question I was going to ask you. Like, was there ever a breaking point where you're like, dude, I got it, like... Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, like uh, it's not even like this is closest, boring. It's, like, closest I got to quitting was uh premiere pro fucked up basically uh -huh. and i thought i lost a month of edits <laughs> and uh i was so close i had a guy who was helping me edit and i was like messaging him man i cannot do this anymore I'm gonna kill it's myself. been a year i am not gonna i'm not yeah. i'm just not gonna do Damn. it i'm gonna work on something else imagine um and even by that point i was just really tired of it um and yeah but it's like um i was like i have to finish it though as well um uh but yeah the job has <laughs> that's, to, that's, that's, that's you have it. to get the job done Just, yeah that was me too it was like it was like because i understand some cost fallacy i get it like you know logically but like spiritually the sunk cost like yeah you just have to see that finish like uh i don't know for me it was like because I, I edited it in such incoherent like i edited it by chapter and there was i did not like the first three chapters were the last three that I did. So it was literally an incoherent mess for like fucking a year. I think you saw an early version and you probably said it was fine, but dude, I, I, I showed it to my brothers and they were like, dude, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and, and they were right. Like it was very bad. But um, when you show someone your art and they just interpret how mentally ill you are. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that was what it was. And it's like good that I showed it to them because I needed to hear that. But I already kind of knew it, like if that makes sense. But like, yeah, they definitely. But the whole thing was like, just constantly doubting whether I could actually bring this to coherence. Cause that was, yeah. the, if only like, eh, if only, if only I'm happy with how it went, whatever. But like, yeah, not having the first 30 minutes done for like that long definitely fucked with me because I was just like, how am I even going to tie this all together? Um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, dude, I was like nine months in or seven months in and I haven't, I hadn't started editing yet. And I, I was, cause I kept rewriting 
the the first 30 minutes I see. getting trying to get the structure down so i can tell talk about everything to oh. open up this world to people where it's like okay here's uh public land and public yes. land management what happened yeah and all of these the desert tortoise no yeah and trying to structure that together was so yep top that was like that was another huge part uh part with there's it there's so many characters they introduced throughout that you have to like make there's them feel feel interesting enough you know what so I mean? yeah. many people yeah exactly then um yeah that's the other another video that i spent over a year on that was the same thing where it's like this french family and like so many different characters so many moving parts and like structuring it so it's coherent and it's enjoyable and entertaining to listen to and it doesn't feel like you're you're straining yourself to like yes. pay attention and understand exactly Oh, who are all these people? Yeah, I, I never wanted someone watching it to, to yeah. experience that. Yeah, making exposition like enjoyable is fucking difficult. Yeah, like it's yeah. actually difficult. Like this is the biggest thing I encountered as well, where it's like I want the video to be funny and I need it to be snappy because the target audience is young guys, basically, like people mm. who would be on TikTok, like juicers, whatever you'd say, like the types who would watch like Sneeko, right? Like yeah. they need that stimulation and shit. And I realized real fucking fast, it is so easy to put information on like a page to make it coherent understandable and funny like fucking not easy not yeah. easy not easy at all uh and uh yeah that uh, bro the writing i need to get better at writing that's what it made me realize basically because like i did the writing in the editing program i don't know if you ever do that but like, writing in the editing program what i mean by that is like i'm basically creating the narrative while i'm editing oh right? I, like, I yeah so like i wrote a long script and the, um the first 30 minutes of that video at one point was like 20 pages which is 20 each page is like three minutes of audio yeah, yeah. right yeah. so it was way too long so that i just like kind of started right i wrote a quick thing and it was like two pages i'm like okay i'm gonna stick to only this and i like yeah and then i started for a lot of that video like i would just like i would write a page i would read it i would edit it i'd go back i'd write another page do, do it like that um because yeah it's sometimes it's really it doesn't quite translate as well. Like if you're writing something, it's it's a different thing than it's than making the video. Even though I don't know, sometimes people are good at like just writing the whole script at once. They just read it and then do it like that. Yeah, I've never been able to just do that. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. You need to weave it, bro. You, know? you gotta you weave need, it together. It's literally you gotta weave it. We're, we're doing a lot of illusions here. We got it's puzzle pieces. You gotta put the weaves. You know what I mean? There you you're, go. You're knitting a nice little sweater for the your tapestry. Grandson. Yeah, yeah, the tapestry. Yeah, no, but that's uh, that's kind of facts, though. Yeah, uh, and I see it like with there's so much fucking uh, footage that's like because you, you're interweaving your commentary with the the footage you actually recorded with the existing footage that's on the internet. Yeah, right. With these like audio um, files, basically. With, yeah, and then with also like the uh, animations or the like uh, the cool comic book type like designs that you did or that you had commissioned. I'm not sure, but that was uh, that was Night Docs who helped me edit that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's like twenty to 30 minute section that uh helped me edit yeah uh but no yeah the, by the end of it it that, feels buttery but like i'm sure it's not so make. much fucking yeah, yeah the um by the end that folder was like a terabyte yeah jesus christ you yeah, know i had the same shit video. yeah oh i my. filled the fucking hard drive yeah it's uh it's just oh it, yeah it was insane and uh it, it's funny because i just made i just posted a video that i i spent like less than two months on which mm. for me is like Did i feel good dude it felt like I was like, do people like this? <laughs> I was surprised because people were like, very good video, mm. very enjoyable, another banger. And I'm like, this? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you know? Um, but um, mm. I, I mean, I'm gonna, I am going to start posting more videos. I'm going to uh, stick to like, you know, every two months I get to post one video mm. while I work on a bigger video in the background. But yeah that's because i, I, I lost so much money on this one yeah mm. so i need i need to make more money now too. the survival instincts are kicking in for us both i think uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i'm definitely there like survival instincts are certainly unfortunately a motivation for actually making output or whatever i don't know how unfortunate it is because um it's talking to jo josh citarella right yeah, and yeah. he was telling me about these rich artists who have rich parents and yeah. their art sucks and it's because they have no financial incentive to connect what they're doing yeah to like make it successful yeah. and like that impulse actually is useful it's, yeah. it helps you figure out like how to make things that people like yes but the thing is is that it uh fucks up my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it, it really it really makes it difficult to plan my life like if mm. that makes sense the, but it is still i i 100 percent agree with you it's 100 mm. percent a very real motivator where it's like a direct correlation like 
oh, I have to survive or I have to fucking, you know, yeah. uh, basically like make it. I need to finish it for the sake of fucking continuing to live or whatever. Yeah, you know what I it's mean? It's a capitalism win. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, the best art made under heavy, you know, restrictions or whatever, yeah. right? Fuck yeah. Soviet you, you, art. You need, you need enough <laughs> pressure to keep you on your toes. <laughs> well, and, Soviet but, art's cool But not too. so much <laughs> that you're like, I can't afford my next meal or the camera that I'm going to use to film this with. No, I know. It's just so funny. Like, I, I lost money on that uh, Libertarian Iceberg. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I was like, fuck, I need, I need the views right now. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like, within a week, I had a video that got like 130K. Mm -hmm. yeah, you I'm like, how can I just, for all of a sudden, I just pulled that out of my ass. But mm -hmm. then like when I'm fine, I'm like, I'm going to think about this one for a while. You do. Yeah. It's so stupid. <laughs> you know, you do what you need to do. But when you undertake a project that's a year long, that becomes what you need to do. And then you grow. You, you, you level up your, like on yeah. a personal level. For sure. Like internally. Like you guys have evolved. How have you evolved? I, I'm a completely different person. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's Same. year and a half. Same. Absolutely. How so? I mean, you lost a lot of weight. I lost a lot of weight, but I, I Hell mean, yeah. I, I mean, I was way, way more unhealthy before. Mm. Uh, quit smoking. Quit smoke. Quit smoking. I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke weed. I don't do anything anymore. Well, I don't take ADHD stimulants. I don't raw dog in life. I'm wow. literally just yeah. Raw um, dog in life. Going for runs. I run. I, I do yoga. I, I weight lift. I oh, do wow. So you just seem like way better in every regard. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So yeah, like, no, that's just... the thing. That's the thing. When you like. When you when you embark on a project like a long project like a difficult piece of art, yeah, you're like there's the tr there's the difficulty of making the art, and then there's the level up that you get when you release the art on your channel, and people are like, wow, this is really cool. But then there's, I mean, almost like the the main reason you do it is to, it's like it's a you're embarking on like a self improvement journey when you when you yeah. make art. Yeah, it's like I mean, it's literally that's I I was saying earlier like the idea of running a marathon or like climbing a mountain that really appeals to me. Mm. If it, it I guess it would feel like that. I Delayed think there's a lot of. There's a lot of delayed gratification. I yeah. Guess, yeah, yeah. yeah for do you sure. find you feel it though? Feel the, the. Do you feel the relief when you finish when you upload it when it's out and it's done? You know how like people talk about how they have dreams when they're 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 back in school. Okay. It's kind of yeah. like I have dreams where I'm still working oh on the God, money. Yeah. Talk. <laughs> yeah, that'd be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the worst thing ever, right? I I mean, I yeah. still like there was moments definitely that I enjoyed it and yeah. found rewarding, but it was tough and it was mm. like it's constant self doubt and mm. you know um everybody like because right before that i had a lot of shout outs from moist critical mm. like right before our boy charlie and he was he was so nice and he shouted out three of my uh videos what happened like, charlie where are the shout outs no i'm just kidding no no no, no 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 no, 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 no he was he was so nice i i and also i didn't i didn't ask him to watch it or anything this yeah, time. Yeah. i just wanted to see how it did by yeah. itself its own merit um so yeah, I purposely didn't ask him, and it was it's a really long uh, uh, video too, so I didn't want to ask. But anyway, I was coming off of that. I was coming off of a lot of buzz around my name, and I I gained, like my subscribers doubled and everything. And then I'm like, I'm gonna work on a thing for a year and a half. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. and like I had people, you oh you squandered your uh all the I'm buzz wrong. you got from him, and I'm like. We're two peas wow. in a pod, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, this is fucking just literally like, yeah, it's the same shit for me. It's, I mean, it's a great impulse, though, right? Like, you get your you get your fame, you get your success, and you're like, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to, like, make a great piece of art. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's versus just like, okay, cool, now I'm going to upload weekly, to, like, garbage, and yeah. just, like, keep the sub number going up. Yeah. yeah. I, in, in my head, though, it's like, okay, so what is, like, is, is it the goal? Okay, sure, the goal is to make art, yeah, but, like, uh, the goal for me is more to level up, right? Like I'm trying to, cause like my whole thing is, uh, I was uh, programmed by the algorithm to be a masochist in my head because I didn't pop off. I did not get views for so long <laughs> that I just kept thinking it was like my own failing pretty much. Obviously, of course, like I kind of understand, like I was being an idiot. Like my videos would like didn't deserve to pop off but a lot of them, the old ones, but I always like just improve, make better videos, better videos, whatever. And so, like, you can see the evolution, and that's that's the thing that made me want to make so much, like, involve so many characters, make something so schizo and so fucking, like, weird, uh, such a weird vibe, is, like, just actually doing, like, not taking the formula and just continuing the same formula. It's, like, how can I actually fucking do something that's, like, an evolution for myself, right? Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to constantly do something. Even now when I'm posting these videos twice a month, I'm gonna, I've been trying something new each time. To, yeah. to, to get better but i remember right before i started the bundy one i'm like i want to do something big yeah like, i got did you get did you feel that yeah for sure <laughs> well, like, yeah, yeah for sure no 100 percent. yeah uh and that's the thing like it, it was it doesn't even like 
uh, in a lot of ways, it doesn't really make sense to have as wide of a scope as I did, but it just kind of evolved. Like I just kind of, as I fell into the world, like I just was like, dude, this, I have to talk about this. This is so interesting. But uh, I don't know if it was the same for you or if you did, like you tell me, but what was the order of events? Did you do most of the writing and then you went? No, I kind of mixed it all together, but I spent, um, uh, okay, so from January until like, August, early August, I was just writing, researching, and doing interviews. And by that point, I went out and went to five different states and did all the uh, filming with uh, Tate Hover, cameraman. We we spent like uh, two and a half weeks out there. And um, so yeah. And then I was talking to I don't know if you know YouTuber barely sociable. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So I like it, I man. was um, we, we we talk on Discord quite a bit. Like in uh, you know get I was in a call with him and he, and he's like, so how's the editing? I'm like. Oh man, I have this character uh, aboard where I'm trying to piece each character and uh, so many moving parts, and I'm trying to have each one have a good uh, arc, a character arc. And, and he's like, "Dude, have you started editing?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "Man, what the fuck? Start editing!" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that is the actual. Re that's real. That's real as fuck. Like you don't know what you have until you start editing. Yeah, like, you don't realize how bad you fucked up until you start editing. Yeah, yeah. I started editing. I was like 20 minutes into it, and I'm like, I. I really do. I forgot I that editing wall. takes so long. <laughs> bro, it doesn't just take so long. It's like you literally, like, dude, I don't know. There's days where it's just like you did so much, but you did nothing. And that, like, you, you just kind of got, did, you wrapped your head around an edit, but you didn't do it or I something. Did, like, uh, I remember I tweeted about this where I spent nine hours on 20 seconds <laughs> of an edit. Yeah. That's, <laughs> but that's, there were so many days like that. I definitely uh, had a lot of that <laughs> shit. You gotta be a fucking masochist. It's the only way to do it. You have to just like <laughs> yeah. you have to somehow cope the suffering. Yeah, like, I fucking love this. Like, there's the only way to get through it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. Actually, yeah. speaking of barely sociable, he he worked on a video for a year as well. If we can ever get this was, guy here, yeah, I was gonna, uh, uh, I was gonna mention let's barely get him sociable. in, get him in the stew. Just he lives quick. in. Yeah, okay, go, go ahead. Oh uh, no, I, I don't know. Actually, I should say Dogs where he lives, him. but he he's American. I know that he so. But yeah, if he's barely a sociable, come on by. He, he uh, you can no. stay in the studio for free for up to a week. He nice. is a he's a guy who, uh, I have almost like he is one of the most impressive guys he's for, so, that I've ever seen on YouTube. Yeah, dude. I, okay, look, I haven't kept up to date, but like his video about Adam Beck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is really fucking low key considering the kind of gravity of what he unveiled or whatever. Like the whole thing is, he basically seems to have. Uh, basically figured out who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Yeah, yeah. He created Bitcoin, which is like a, it's a actually like a massive story in my head. But it got it. it really just kind of went under the radar. Uh, his his fucking uh, Ross, what's his name? Ross. Aldridge? Oh, the Silk Aldridge. Road one. Yeah, Silk Road coverage is fucking dope. Yeah, no, a lot of. Uh, he's so good. A lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah. And he's another one of these guys, and he does like full three D modeling for his. Um, yeah, he's continued his... to evolve. Yeah, and we're always talking to him about like oh, how are we gonna get a couple of videos out this year and stuff and oh yeah and other stuff. But like, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, man, I've been working on this 3D model. I'm getting the lighting just right. And <laughs> like, well, we were supposed to post more. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's it's like there's something wrong with our brains. Like, obviously, I think that's the thing is like I I've gotten to spend a lot more time with you, especially mm -hmm. recently, and yeah. I think we do have a kind of uh, an affinity to kind of like figure. I, I do feel like uh, we kind of think the same mm -hmm. on a lot of things, mm -hmm. which yeah. I think is something to do probably with that. And like, I, I would wonder what, how you guys would categorize it uh, from the outside, I guess, looking in. Like, what would you describe as like, because like you, like you can frame it in a negative way, you can frame it in a positive way, but like without worrying about, you know, offending us, what, what would you appraise like this kind of brain as like, because, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Definitely kind of general madness. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you, uh, like, I know you've said many times, like, I could never do that. This is mm. stupid as fuck. Like, you basically, and it's good advice that you give. When you give advice to uh, aspiring artists, it is to just basically iteration, like, create and create fast and, you know, evolve fast, basically, which is way better advice than, like, dedicate, you know, way too much time to a project that might not. It depends. You guys, so you guys, I wouldn't give that advice to you guys because you guys are peers of mine. Mm. Well, when I'm giving this advice, it's people who are often the vast majority of my 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 mentees or whatever, are just like starting shout out, out to the mentors, dude. They're just like they're just starting out. And if you're just starting out, then, yeah, I, I don't think it, it's useful to make your first project a year long. But for you guys, you had a wealth of a backlog. You've been doing this for a while. You've earned the right to take a year, a mm. year and a half on a project. 
even then, you know, I look at that, and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, well, I think as a uh, friend, I think you were certainly... But, um, yeah. but also, I think that, like, uh, ideal situation for me, even, is to be able to crank stuff out quickly, but also in the background be working on something long form. And yeah. that is what I'm doing basically all the time. I'm, I always have some long form project I'm working on. Right now, it's getting, like, animations for all of the songs on my, al like, album. But, like, I, as that's happening, I'm also putting out videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it becomes analogous to just directing at some point, right? I remember when we were talking to, so funny that like juxtaposition talking to Matt Johnson about how he was like, oh yeah, like all, I've worked on things for three years knowing it was bad the whole time and mm -hmm. had no option other than to finish it and mm -hmm. it was bad and no one liked it and I had to move on. Yes. That's a terrifying reality, right? Casual friend of the studio, Matt Johnson. <laughs> oh, you know, that's the thing about movies too, right? So if I wanted to go the traditional route with this, I, I would have spent the exact same amount of time, probably more time, because I would have to get all of the ex rights cleared and everything, and um, there, and I would have to get a, distrib a distributor, I would have to get into a film festival, and the chances of that happening are slim, even if I spent a million dollars and five years on that project. Mm. Most documentaries fail. Most movies fail. Mm. Most movies do not get, people don't pay money to go see them. Mm -hmm. Um and we we're talking about you. I was talking about YouTube earlier. Like, oh, there's only oh, I only have a week after uh, where people are gonna watch it until the views go down. Yeah. Movies have a weekend. They have the yeah. box office weekend. And if they fail on that box office weekend, then they're out of theaters. Um, they're just incredible. So, so it's 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 the same. It's the same thing at the end of the day. It's actually way worse and way less forgiving if you tried to do it traditionally. You should rip your documentary to VHS and sell it as a physical thing. <laughs> I could go on the that's, street, that's <laughs> like on the sidewalk. Or I, was, I, was thinking, I was thinking like a cool piece of merch. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, like, and you could, you could really get like a poster for it. Like you can get the art you want, the title you want. That would be cool. Yeah. Where it's just like the whole, the whole artistic vision is complete where you don't have to worry about like an algorithm or like YouTube thumbnails. Yeah. I think he should post another video instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, tr trust me, the merch, uh, the merch being a distraction can definitely be a, a real thing, yeah. But uh, with the what you're saying, I wanted to ask: did the the thought did cross your mind to like submit it to a film festival or something, right? Like, yeah, I've, I was thinking that for a while, but like literally because I considered all of the things that I just said there, and I'm yeah. like, if I post it on YouTube, at least I'm guaranteed to get, make money. It will further my legacy on YouTube, and yeah. um, and it's a it's an investment in your brand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm with you. I've thought about it, and and it's just like, um, oh, dude, I can barely fuck it. Like the idea of going through that whole like bureaucratic fucking hassle is uh, dis. It would be just hell. That's a whole other skill set that I've never worked yeah. on. But like, yeah, most directors who like we went to see that movie Happy End. Yeah. So that guy, that that guy's literally pretty much the same age as me, right? Right, okay. And he, so what he did, and because I was looking at his career and based on what he, his answers when people are asking questions, is yep. he made a bunch of short films, mm -hmm. right? He submitted them to film festivals. Some have got some buzz. Then he tried to, he applied to uh, screenwriting uh, fellowships, right? So he got that. And then he was able to get money together right. from investors so he can make this movie, yeah. right? And now it's, it's in film festivals. Right. But that's 10 years of his yes, life, you yeah. know, doing he, that to get to that point where he can finally, yeah. now he's a, a new filmmaker. Yeah, well, he, he's been doing it for 10 years he, he for invested, no money. Invested in a portfolio oh. for 10 years, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's a happy end. It's a Japanese. Or, ja yeah, Japanese I guess yeah. Japanese movie, yeah. Yeah, um, it was good. That's what you got to do. You have to like, you, you just have to focus on, on one thing. Like, take your thing and just fucking drive it home. Like, don't worry about the other shit. Don't worry, like just fuck around. If like yeah. you're gonna like you seem like you're fucking your life up until all of a sudden you're like a known person who's known for doing great things and you have like the finance to back it up. Yeah. And then it becomes all worth it. Yeah. Or you fail that's and die in obscurity. That's my code. Uh, and then we yeah, don't we don't we never find out about you see, or talk that, about that's, you. That's, that's, that's most people. Because that creeps in. That the the actual like because that failure. definitely creeps in where it's like because look, I understand the drive toward like trying to actually, you know, get funding, proper funding, like do it through like the official channels or whatever which just means like, you know, basically like a big company or whatever that'll, you know, help you out. And I totally understand why people would want that, dude. Like you can, you can uh, delegate so much more. There's so much more like streamlined systems and like you will have people on your ass who are like, you got to do this, you got to do this. And like that will motivate you, whatever. Not for us wretched goys though. No, not for us. No, but um, 
I don't know. I, I let me just say I I do get the appeal, and uh, I don't know. I like there's there's a point that you hit when you're working on a fucking movie length project that you're just alone. Like the, yeah. I, I don't know if this hit for you, but like this hit pretty pretty very real for me, where it's just like this is only gonna happen if I do it. Like it's mm. literally there are people who are helping me and helping to manifest the vision, which I'm very grateful for, obviously. But like I am, I'm the only one who can bring this to coherence, right? Like I mentioned, how the first thirty minutes are unfinished. It's like I can't communicate effectively because I don't even really know how to fucking manifest this. Uh, and yeah, that's just uh, that was blech. that was just like the a lot of directors, from what I'm aware, at least they'll get someone to write the script, mm -hmm. right? They'll, yeah, they'll get someone to edit it, at yeah. least to guide them through the edits and shit yeah. like that. Um, and yeah, they'll, they'll sometimes even have people to storyboard it and like cinematographers and all this shit. Yeah. It's most like, directors, uh, they know enough about each department to kind of oversee people who yeah. help them with, yeah. Putting out their vision basically. Yeah. Um, that's why I, I call it, but they have answers. That's the thing, right? Like yeah. director has to have an answer to every question. Yep. And that's why anybody could be a director, but not everybody could be a good director. I agree. But, you know? Yeah. 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 I would like to one day um try and be like a legitimate like you know uh mainstream director. I think that was always my goal. Um mm -hmm. right now I'm just uh like I said my more, my mindset is just to make the money back that I lost, but even still like uh we were talking about success and failure earlier like um I guess we live uh we live in a society. We basically uh, we live in a society where um to not be successful is to fail. So if you, if you try something and I it's see. not as, you know, like yeah. this big thing where you get all a bunch of money, then you failed, yeah. right? Yeah. Like really, I mean, just finishing the thing, too. Right. It's such a big win. Yeah, right? true. Um, Do you know, like, survivor bias? Is that is that, like, an overdone meme? That's the, the thing. The, that's real. The, the, the uh, mm -hmm. image of the plane with the bullet holes. Yeah, Do yeah, you yeah, know yeah. about this? Okay, no. Sorry. It was like, they, um, I think it was World War One or World War Two. they were... Trying to figure out how to what parts of planes to reinforce so they wouldn't get shot down. So the planes that would land, they would like look at where the bullet holes were to see where people were shooting them, and then reinforce where the bullet holes were. And then some guy was like, "Why don't we re reinforce where the bullet yeah. holes aren't? Because the planes are getting shot down when they get hit there." Right. So survivor bias is like, oh, you only see the success. Yeah. You only see like what happened, right? So as artists or as like as creators, you're like, oh, I know, I can think of a hundred people who are like started from nothing and built their careers up and became successful. Therefore, anyone can do it. But it's like, no, you didn't hear about like the 99% of people who didn't do it because you don't hear about them. Yeah. Right. And like when you kind of really get grasp, like, oh, fuck, that could be me. Mm. Yeah. And then you keep going. Like there's so many levels of like failure, potential failure yeah. you have to accept in order to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I see it all the time with my peers, dude. Like I, there's people who make very similar videos to us who do not get recognition. Oh, yeah. Uh, our boy, collective boy, Slush, like Slush made a, a video like, yeah. basically centered around Sneeko and like the Manosphere and whatever. And it, it like did not do what he was hoping it would do, basically, like at least as far as I'm aware. And I'm he's, sure he's, made, proud. he's made like some really good Real stuff. Bangers, like, yeah, like where he spent a year on the Wreckful documentary. Yep. Um, and oh, yeah, yeah, that was like he, such a good video. Um, yep. But uh, yeah. now he's got he's got a second channel where he's literally now he's just doing Slush. He's like, yeah, yeah. he's like, fuck it. I'm just going to talk about South Park. and can make yeah. a bunch of, and he's getting like, he's getting way more views than he ever got in his, his main channel. This is the YouTuber dialectic. Okay. <laughs> is if you actually, if, okay. So there's the whole thing where it's like, you, you want to be a mainstream, you know, uh, creator, director, whatever the hell. So you got to kind of conform. Yes. A little bit, whatever to whatever they want. You got to like follow through the fucking path that they set out and whatever. Um, but you can probably just focus on the projects you're working on. You know what I mean? The YouTuber conundrum is that. If you don't have a steady income, too much is riding on the success of a video. Yeah. And it's not just that it's riding on the video being good. Of course not. That's not enough. It's also riding on YouTube's algorithm not fucking you. It's also riding on not getting, you know, literally the video removed or age restricted or whatever. Uh, it's also riding on, you know, uh, like if you have merch or whatever, like will people buy it? Is the merch good? Like there's so many different weird little variables. Like, is your thumbnail good enough? Is your title good enough? Is your first five minutes interesting enough? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, yeah. It's a lot to... Uh, it's crazy how, like, just the title and thumbnail is, like, 60%, maybe 70% of the equation, right? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. You spend your so well, long the, on things just yeah. for that one thing. Well, exactly. That's is the, the thing. It's like you, you literally, like, you created your little, your little uh, beautiful 
sculpture and it's like you have to you have to now tag a little image as this is the sculpture you have to make it into a 2d thing yeah you know I mean? that's why yeah. i started taking design classes and stuff and um just to get them i i always used to do everything all my thumbnails in after effects because i never knew how to use photoshop uh -huh. i'm like fuck it i'm gonna take design class and i'm gonna learn how to use photoshop Bro, but this is the dialectic though. Ever like this is what people are having to do. It's like you do have you need the steady content that makes you regular income and then you have the the side big project, you know what I mean? Yeah. And which one will swallow you? Will you just become a slop head, which happens because it, because if it works too well, your brain can just be conformed to that, right? <laughs> or do you just like fall off the slop and you don't commit to the slop enough and you're just like you put way too much risk into the big video and whatever, right? You guys slop heads or art cells? <laughs> yeah. Who's the who's the sloppiest? I like slop head. The That's sloppiest good. slop head. Of the sloppiest slop moon. We don't want to name moon? names here. Yeah, I'm gonna name moon. Yeah. <laughs> moon fucking sucks. Yeah, moon. <laughs> do you think moon do you, Oki drama? Do you think uh, begins? Do you think moon has has dreams and ambitions? Do you think moon like stays awake at night thinking about like the music project he's like, always wanted to work on? Um. I, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think he's, yeah, I think I, he's in his jacuzzi, just like uh, probably he, with like I don't know his seven, you know, he, seven he, concubines, mm -hmm, he's, seven yeah. conks. He's he's seven he's, conks. he's 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 a citizen Kane looking at the snow globe. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> I think reminiscing of, of the past. And there's actually there's a guy in my Discord who I think I'm gonna hire to do my clips channel. Who uh, all he does he just makes moon videos shittier for fun. Like he re edits, <laughs> re edits moon videos to that's, be like worse that's for awesome. his own enjoyment. That is so awesome! Oh my god, yeah, that's a different league of type of content. Like, man, it's rare that you find someone now who they actually clearly just make videos for fun. Like, yeah, like like authentically just for fuck like shits and giggles. Like, it's actually rare to have that come in my feed because, of course, the stuff in my feed is usually like popping off, right? Like, or it's like, uh, yeah, familiar. It's hard. Faces. To, it's hard to do it if it's your living for fun. Because it's so mm. serious. Yeah. yeah. Everything relies on it. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We have a little bit of fun. We have a little bit of fun. <laughs> we have a little bit. Yeah. We, we get silly. We get silly. You, I, I agree, though. You do have to, like, there's just that inevitable business aspect you have to figure out. Um, yeah. And that's what's going to get you, especially on YouTube, where so much of it is clout. Yeah. Like, you have to get in the room in the first place. Bro. You have to get in the room, and then you have to be respected in the room. And yeah. that's why you need That's why you need both. Like, the clips channel matters. The, the shit like that matters, where, like, your face is everywhere. Yeah, and popping up in conversations, and then once you're there, people are like, "Oh fuck, you're dope!" Like you make you, dope shit. Yeah, you need I, both those things. I, I think the biggest dub you could probably agree, but let me know. Like the biggest dub from making the kinds of videos we do, which are masochistic, you know, long fucking videos, uh, is basically that we actually do like get kind of like a lot of for me at least a lot of connections, right? Like people. Yeah, like like other creators watching your content is a fucking massive. Well, we're compliment. like YouTubers, YouTubers. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that is a massive yeah. compliment, and yeah. like that. Uh, the same thing with like uh, artists or whatever. Like a lot of artists, whether it be visual artists or like animators or musicians, they'll reach out to me to want because they want to work with me, and I'm like, dude, thank fucking god because yeah. they're talented, and it's like you know people like Mike the Bike, right? Like uh, Brian Mafat. There's a lot of people who I've worked with, Panda, Puffkin, you know, there's there's a lot of people I've worked with that it's like literally the only reason that I knew that they existed is because they watched one of my videos and they, you know, resonated or whatever and they kind of reached out, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, this is a very lucky sap low. Uh, like, that's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, just people who, uh, just from making something that they liked, they were like, dude, they, they were like, I want to help you, right? Yeah. There's a general, like, studio sort of post-sigma Toronto YouTuber dub is that we all have crazy connections. <laughs> like I think everyone, everyone in the studio, everyone in the orbit of the studio has crazy like people in their DMs. Swag. People are like, I love what you do. Like they reach out because it's like the the respect is there. Mm. Um, did Bill Clinton mm. reach out to you guys yet? Oh, Not dude, yet. that was Didn't get that the was the invite quite yet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. almost as good as Klaus Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's true. It's true. We have we have connections because when people watch art that connects with them you want to reach out and be like this inspired me and there's slop content that you might see and you're like okay i have 10 million views but you're not gonna be like oh i have to get this person in the studio yeah you know like yeah. we watch stuff all the time and it doesn't even register like i'm not gonna reach out to this person and be like invite them over so yeah you know? yeah it's crazy yeah i mean yeah there's a homepage commentary in my head is like one distinction i'll give for like a type of content or whatever where it's like, if you're on the homepage of YouTube, I think nowadays, I'm not certain, but I think nowadays, if you're like fresh account on the homepage, it does need to be like verified channels, more or less, or at least like they have to be approved in some capacity. 
And so, yeah, there's certain channels, of course, if you produce relatively formulaic stuff that's like, you know, consistently not going to cause controversy, or at the very least, it's like nobody, you're not going to cause problems, then yeah, basically on the homepage, you're going to see a lot of stuff that's derivative or it's at the very least, it's like not that crazy. Like it is just kind of sloppy, a little bit sloppy. Um, but uh, yeah, when you start to go under under the skin, man, there's a lot of talent. There's so much fucking disgusting amounts of talent on YouTube. Yeah. It's insane. Like I'm yeah. amazed consistently, bro. Like there's so many people who are so fucking more, like much more talented than me in specific it's domains, right? Like incredible. Yeah, you know? it's insane, bro. I think it's some of my favorite YouTubers are like people who, like they voted, that they put out like four videos like three years ago <laughs> and never uploaded again. Like this the guy. Goats. Uh, Oh fuck! He was the guy who used to do surveillance cameraman, and oh, now he does man. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he does the. Um, Sapla put me onto that. That's uh, uh, Vagrant Holiday. Vagrant Holiday. Vagrant yeah. Holiday. Yeah. I love that guy. Bro. His stuff is incredible, and he yeah. just like put out four videos. He didn't monetize any of them, and then he's just like, "Fuck it, that's like, it." I just wanted to. That's someone who actually does it for fun. Mm, um, yeah. And yeah. like, yeah, he would just go, he would travel to different countries and break uh, petty vagrancy laws. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd like sleep outside and like break yeah. into hotels and like sleep in their stairwell and yeah. not pay for shit. It was mm. very anti-vlogger. He was, like, it was, it was awesome was actually, guy. And uh, you're watching it and there's like moments of beauty. It's yeah. like very weird, like little moments of beauty that he'll document. And then he'll, there'll be moments where like a guy gives him, like he hitch, uh, hitches a ride with a guy mm -hmm. and this like, this random guy that just, picked him up just confesses to cheating on his wife yes and his, and his yes. fucking his uh uh his uh, new girlfriend or whatever is pregnant and mm. so he's like just like basically like divulging all these fucked up aspects of his life yeah mm. oh man yeah no very uh very authentic super vlog. authentic yeah. which yeah that's that's the best thing about that guy's uh stuff so Please come back if you if you happen to be watching this right vagrant holiday guy come back and come to the studio where we'll put you up for one week on our couch. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a certain there's a certain aura okay. that radiates well, off someone who's there's doing also it that, um, like that. God, what's his name? Uh Value Select. Value Select. He doesn't monetize his YouTube channel no. at all. No, he doesn't take sponsorships either. Yeah, and he just he just only does Patreon. Yeah. Uh, he the says. goat. What okay, can you provide a psych breakdown of Value Select? Oh, you know, I could I could go on about Mr. Select. Mr. Okay. Select's a very talented, talented man and his stuff Fact. is very high quality. Um but there's yeah. Psychologically, uh, he's an interesting fella. Okay. Very interesting fella. Very dedicated to the craft. Super artistic. Yeah. Maybe even, maybe even too artistic. <laughs> What's like, too artistic? He's maybe too. He's maybe too committed. Because like no one would have. I don't think anyone would have uh, judged him for turning monetization on. That's just basic. Right. Yeah. That's like low level mat. Like that's high. Sorry, masochist. Yeah. Like, that's just masochist. But he he. He didn't. He didn't. He, he just didn't. didn't. Yeah. All monetization off. No sponsorships. Yeah. Pure oh, Patreon. He's, he's got that winner's smile. So much. Oh, he's such a personable guy. He is right? great guy. He's leaving money on the table with that winner's smile. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, great guy. Just a powerful man. A great guy to hang out. We hung out with him at VidCon. Yeah. He um, was at the uh, at the Turkey Tom party. I watched him. He got approached by a few. Uh, there was a few like sketch comedy people there. Yeah. And uh, he got approached like, oh my God, your value yeah, select. Yeah. And what they were they, really excited to what meet what him. He said, what he said was like, you know, I was at this party with all these big names. I know all these guys' faces, but I was only excited to meet you, value select. Ah, oh, that's cool. That's yeah, awesome. You know. yeah, I have a friend who's like super into him, like, and like went to his show, and, like everything. Like, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's very good. Very, very talented y guy. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the not monetizing cope. Like, I don't know if you've ever had it, but like, I had it for sure just because I was on YouTube too long. Ooh, but, like, I had... It is a cope. Like, it's, it's also like just not possible as you get older. Obviously. Yeah. No, I, I had the thing where I wouldn't take sponsors until Same. this one. Yeah. Like, this is the first sponsor I've ever taken. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, like, I remember being like, we're inundated by ads, man. Why should I add more ads yeah. to the world? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know, man. Most people don't care. There's only one person who like uh, commented uh, saying unsubscribing because you did an ad and like everybody else does it. They just skip the bye -bye. Bye -bye. Yeah, they, they bye -bye. say that until they get like 5,000 USD deposited in their bank account. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, no. I, yeah. And we, if, we all know the game. If you need a justification, if you're watching this and you have this, you know, incorrect mindset, let me plant a worm in your ear. Okay. Think about it logically. Why would YouTube promote content that's unmonetized? 
Well, that's what if you so want to, Valley Select. You want he, people to see it, dude? Someone said that to him, and I, I overheard him. He was saying that um, he wants it to be like kind of an old like jazz bar that someone's walking past, and oh. they just like the music is like pouring out of the door, and you just go that. He's fucking. Thing. He's an artisan, dude. He's a total artist. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's got that winter smile. Again, very likable, genuine guy. I really enjoyed talking to. Him. I had, I really felt like I got along with him. He's got that winner's cadence, too. Hey, Value yeah. Select is so, like, the way he talks is so sincere, it's almost like a foil to me, because, like, I'm, like, drenched in irony, and, like, mm. I'll say sincere things, but, like, he's, like, he, like, I think in this world, you can either, you can either get, if I'm creating a dichotomy here, you can either get irony poisoned, or, like, everything you say just bleeds with sincerity. He's really on mm. the bleeding with sincerity. Does it ever bother you, or are you like, dude, whose face are you wearing, bro? <laughs> There's, I could go on yeah, he's okay. about the psychology of Mr. Select, but... All, all that really needs to be said is great guy, powerful artist. Fuck you, um, And uh, yeah, cool cool dude. Ne- needs to come to Toronto. Come to Toronto. Toronto. I, was, I was DMing him. We need to go biking. <laughs> go cycling. What, yeah. what is... Uh, Hang out with the boys in Toronto. I, we should all answer. But like, what is um, a project that's like, you probably will never do it, but you definitely want to be able like you want to you would love to see someone else do it or like see it happen or whatever oh you're not like, gonna, you're not gonna like my answer to this one <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> i have a lot of answers to this one well, okay. all right yeah. i mean but like like it, it can be a dream project or it can just be like that needs to be created or whatever someone someone needs to kill themselves publicly uh as, as a piece of art um and it's not gonna be me i've got too much to live for now i got uh, you bro Eric Andre wanted to do that. Yeah. That's how he wanted to end the show at season three. He ne- it was never supposed to go fucked. past it. He was going to jump off a building and um, in, in a skit, like have a skit lined up and the end of the skit is he just jumps off the building and it ends with just like his dead body on the ground. And he was like obsessed with doing this. And yeah. he kept hammering home to the studio trying to get them to like convince him to like at least fund <laughs> it. It was dead serious. It's crazy mm-hmm. when you hear him talk about it, like how passionate he was about killing himself to end the show. Yeah. Who's that news reporter lady who did that? Christine something? Jesus Christ. Um, she did it live on air. She shot herself. But it wasn't, I don't think it was an art piece. It wasn't right? an art piece. Yeah, no. that's the problem. Oh, what about the, the, shock. the Russian roulette guy? You don't get any, you don't get any points for that. Have you seen that? Or just to be a Did he depressed. intend to die? Oh, wait. I was talking about this at, at your place. The guy, the British guy who did like the Russian roulette live. Yes. Yes. Um, he, he just fucking broke down or whatever. Yeah, he spent a year. This is a crazy, you should, everyone should watch this. This is like an amazing piece of, of art. He, the whole thing, documentary is he had to hire a guy to be in the room with him, and he loaded a revolver. I found it, yeah, he loaded a revolver with five bullets. Like, it was true Russian roulette where only one was empty. It wasn't one was full. One was empty. Mm. And he fires... No, sorry, sorry, sorry. One was full, but he fires all five shots. Mm. So he, he has a target in front of him, and he has his head. And he loads it, shoots it twice, shoots at the target, shoots his head twice, then shoots the bullet. Oh, fuck. And, and, it, and there's no ending to it. There's no, like... And that, ladies and gentlemen, it's just like he just fucking oh, and then the credits roll as he's like shaking after he fires the bullet at the target, the final one. It's crazy. Yeesh. What do you get? And there's no music either. It's just the fucking most intense thing you've ever watched. So crazy. (laughs) Yeah, BBC. BBC aired that. I need to check that out. What do I? What do I get or what? Like someone killing themselves. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering as well. (laughs) I don't like. Like I'm hoping the specifications need to be like uh, some kind of commentary. Anyone can do it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well we saw this right would you consider like the guy who burnt who self-immolated would that be fall under that the was just mental or, illness that is uh that's protest okay I and see. it's been done before i see trite trite <laughs> <laughs> you should have said that over his burning corpse yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's no. a little trite for me yeah, yeah, a little just pedestrian a guy, a guy the scarf walks by and he's just like mm. No, you got to do it. You got to do it right. <laughs> you got to do it right. Okay. Um, Aaron Bushnell, is that his name? Aaron Bushnell. Yeah. yeah. You- yeah. Centricide fan. Really? <laughs> uh, their name was Anarchity. Um, that was their username. Oh my God. That's so fucked up. Illness. <laughs> that's it. It's like, fuck it. Were they watching a bunch of bread tubers as well? <laughs> yeah, they're watching a bunch of bread tubers. Tell me, tell me to stop if, if uh, this is something that you would rather not be uh, said, but like there was a project that you had or an idea. It was just a very funny idea to me to like go through basically all of the steps of getting made uh, medically yeah, assisted dying. Medically yeah. assisted. Ah, uh, yeah. Basically, documentary style. Basically going through all the steps and then just like getting to that like final bed or whatever and just be like, the thing is, nah, <laughs> nah, I'm good actually. Well, the thing is, it's like, it's, if it, the, the, the narrative is it's legal for mental illness now. Yeah. And if it's legal for mental illness, yeah. I qualify. Right. Because I don't want to be here most mm-hmm. of the time. Mm-hmm. So why can't I get this? 
Right. And then how far could I go? Right. And then probably I'd get too agreeable near the end and be like, that's, oh, well, they that's, put so much work into that's it. That's the big thing. <laughs> See, that's the big thing. I don't want to waste like, this nice lady's time. She's got the injection. <laughs> I would never want to help you with that, but it would provide a very interesting commentary in a way, like just seeing how yeah. easy it is and whatever. And so I understand the like, the want or the idea, but like at the same time, I, j- I would be, I would just be worried that you would get into that final room and then the human battery compartment would open and mm. you just get put like it's like it's <laughs> yeah. like over now it's like, like no sorry we got you bro i'm like yeah. no, no it was a prank it's like it doesn't matter you just, no, yeah. you have yeah. to die go, go into the human you're soil it now yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> didn't we're in hell make a made video yeah yeah it's made grandma awesome made. it's a pro made video too it's like um mm. yeah right yeah yeah mm. no one of his family members or something like it's that? his grandma I, yeah, yeah, yeah he so. interviews his grandmother before she, uh no his aunt i think yeah i think before she gets made Oh, Jesus yeah. gets made. Like, made yeah. in and, and let me just say, I would like never kill fella. myself, but I might get mated. Yeah, made man. I'm a made man. You're a made man. <laughs> fuck these there you guys. Go. Fuck, wait, fuck, Greg. What's, but, your, what's your project, Oki? What's your. Wait, wait, let me just say that. Let me just say, though, no one should ever kill themselves. You, and suicide is bad and sad. It's and cringe, and most importantly. And cringe. You shouldn't have incest. Incest is also and bad. And also, incest is yeah. bad. And the reason is because you want to aspire to always evolve. Okay? I believe I believe it's in too good, easy. To yeah, kill I, I, I believe into, in the good things and I denounce the bad things. Do that, uh, that's incest. That's right. You denounce violence, political violence. And we we open the podcast with this, and I'm, I'm, I just I think it's a more complicated question than it needs to be. Um, kind of deconstruct a little bit because I think the question's all kind of off. Yeah, we're kind of shooting the shit question. here. We're kind of shooting the shit. What were you going to yeah. say? Uh, oh, yeah, you asked me a question. What's the... Your why dream project. If you just want to, something to, you want to exist. Going... Well, see, okay. There is footage of Alex Jones going to Bohemian Grove. Yeah, seen that. But he hasn't really been like, I want someone to actually go with hidden cameras, you know, put on the robe, Hobnob with the elites. Uh, see mm. the child baby sacrifice. Yeah. I want to see the whole thing. That's a good thing, one. You know? That's yeah. a fucking good one, actually. That's a really good one. I've thought this very consistently. Like, if you somehow, if you were just that insane, like if Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Yeah. Like, actually just had some advanced, uh, you know, camera system put into his eye or something like that. Like, the, the if he wanted to, he probably could somehow, like, weasel his way into extremely... Uh, he has eyes wide shut shit. Like, you don't, yeah, yeah, exactly. you don't even need the eye implant. There are there's an excellent four hundred dollar coffee camera I have. Oh, um, <laughs> that it looks indistinguishable from a coffee cup like this, and yeah. just recording all the time. Damn, works, yeah, works works every time. Yeah, I, have you get? I don't know. I've watched a lot of shows and stuff, but like the the moments when like people like in mafia movies, especially when people realize that they walked into a room that ah, it's like un- it's like un- yeah, exactly. it's like <laughs> yes. you Joe Pesci me. and, and yeah. Goodfellas. He yeah. walks yeah. into the room, yeah. two guys behind him because ah, yeah. Shit. The worst is when they they drive into the middle of a field and then they're like, okay, get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like, it's like oh no, taking the hole. Like yeah. oh fuck. Yeah, that that the uh, psychology of that really fascinates me. So, um, but I I would like to be I would like to like get some kind of okay i i don't know if this is good to say but i, you know, say I won't it. be specific no I, I, but to get be specific some, some like some let's just say some like governments like some very powerful governments they certainly conversations like this happen i'm sure um and so like to get to i would i would be interested to see like a high up official recording basically a uh, a conversation where he goes in and he basically has to like fight for his life like but you but you don't know that like like it's it's like it's all occurring with like their high level language, if that makes sense. But like he knows like he's brokering for his life effectively. Right. You know what I mean? Um, that's why I like Breaking Bad, I think, so much. Because that was like very overt broker- brokering for his life. But yeah. Uh, fuck, man. Yeah, Henry I like just happens to and... have been pulling up the Breaking Bad images behind you. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That was... That was... It was, yeah, it was pretty... Really? Oh, yeah, interesting. It was, up there. it was up there like two seconds before. Yeah. Hell you said yeah, that. Henry, dude. Hell yeah. We're connecting. Oh, my, uh, sorry, but that wouldn't be, I guess, my, my dream project. My dream project would be um, you get um, a modern day alive philosopher or like high level academic to shadow a celebrity. Okay. <clears throat> and so you have like something along the lines of like Zizek shadowing Mr. Beast. Mm. Or, <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Or you have like, this idea. I love this idea. Yeah, exactly. Just, just pontificating the whole time. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, and it's, so it's like you basically. So you, it's like two metrics that would be cool. It's like Mr. Beast is like doing the most insane fucking shit ever. It's like he's like curing like three hundred Af- three thousand African kids of blindness or whatever. And then Zizek is just like, just like in the background, like just like this is fast. And then you cut to him like his kind of commentary or whatever. And then you like cut to Mr. Beast commentary, and he's like, yeah, that's, I just do this every day. This is just my this is my life. And then at the end, you have them like talk to each other for like an hour or two. 
Uh, and there, I, I, I was gonna like if there's any combinations you guys would have an idea for, but I was thinking like Judith Butler and like Kim Kardashian or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, like like have like a the, like a quintessential like a, a high level feminist philosopher or whatever uh, interacting basically with well, like j- so just funny. um on the topic of like what was is an ideal long term goal for this podcast is we get stuff like that, that we get dope, Judith yeah. Butler yeah, we get and Kim weird Kardashian mixes. on the same couch and, yes like combinations of people you would never see together mm-hmm. um, yeah I is think that the, what you tried to do with taylor lorenz and Don, john Tron? i have been, but that's that's the thing i don't try to get taylor lorenz and which i did i got <laughs> taylor lorenz and john tron in the same room um but i don't try to do that it happens naturally but then to capture that and make it into a podcast or, or something that's that's what excites Dude, me now we do now we like totally i do that i do that regardless i get <laughs> i get taylor lorenz and john tron in the same room this is what i imagine accidentally yeah this is what i imagine aliens like we did that accidentally humans, you know what i mean yeah that yeah. did just happen it just happened that did just happen we're just like okay yep here's john tron and here's taylor lorenz who's somehow a fan of drag yeah <laughs> and taylor lorenz who is somehow a fan of drag um, was she a fan of you? Yeah, she follows me. Yeah. Oh, I didn't but, know. That. But more from like, a, what's going on with the youth? What's what's going on with the internet? I thought I thought people? Steve got her. No, uh, no, I got her. Oh, I thought I'm, Steve, I'm friends with Taylor Lorenz. I thought Steve was the one who got her. I'm straight up friends with Taylor Lorenz. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. I follow her meme page. I think I came up to you at the. I'm like, dude, did, did you? Did you? I, I came up to you yeah. <laughs> when people were leaving. All the commentators. Yeah, you could tell. You could tell the vibes <laughs> were like immediately the commentator. The, they were hanging with commentary people in at VidCon. And you could tell immediately as soon as Taylor, it's like a lion prowls in. It's like, Jesus. But she came in with a mask and started opening up windows and all yeah. the reactionary commentary guys are just like, oh my God, I made four videos about her. I got to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got to get like Noam Chomsky and Aiden Ross. Like, Oh, that would oh, be. Just wheeling around Chomsky. And this is like, like end of days. He's just like observing this like 22 uh, year old. That would give him but a like, stroke. We're on, we're, on, we're on a good path to do stuff like that. Basically. We are on a good path to do stuff like that. Be the, I mean, I, I, I fantasize with it all the time. There's so many great pieces of media that have existed because people just had like dreams of making cool things exist. And that era just seems behind us now. And it's like, why can't we get um, like Zizek and Tate to talk? Okay. And like the biggest thing and why that would be so cool and interesting, right? To me, at least, is it's like, okay, so um, then there is an incentive for the academic, like a pretty clear one, at least in my head, where it's like they're getting like people will see it you know what i mean like yeah. you they get to tag along with mr beast or kim kardashian or whatever they'll kind of get a little bit of access to like the masses or whatever yeah. you'd say right whereas if they were a little bit more niche um and the thing is is i think convincing the celebrities might be tough yeah because like they don't have to fucking but if do that. Fr- the celebrities are friends with us yeah exactly yeah well this is what's cool right is that like all these you look at the, the zizek peterson debate you know it's like it's it's ideas it's not two. It's not two actionable people. It's two ideas. People comparing their ideas. And like, I want to see Aiden Ross is just like material manifest. Like that guy just does stuff. He does not think about anything he does. Yeah. And then you have someone like a like Zizek or like, um, like Byung-Chul Han, like these new philosophers yeah. who like all they do is think. Like get that together in a room where it's like, okay, here is your philosophy in action, or here is like the yeah. two opposites of the spectrum. Dude, Byung- see what they have to talk about. Byung-Chul Han and Elon Musk. We got it. We got to get that going. That would be tight. The. Uh... What, what's what's the guy is it Baidu I don't know I think the French philosopher at the moment but he him and XQC oh yeah I don't know it, it wouldn't it, I got I, your I got your mortgage on my on my wrist brokey I, yeah I don't think uh, the thing is is like there are some like famous characters that I think wouldn't be that interesting but like yeah if you could if you could elevate it to the point of like Donald Trump or like Bill Clinton. We literally just need to keep doing what we're doing. Keep yeah. existing. Keep expanding our social circle. I'm gonna hang out. Des- we're gonna hang out with Destiny in like a week. Yeah, true. Really? Yeah, we're gonna hang out with Destiny in like four days. Yeah. Where is he? Gonna, um, where's that? Miami. Oh, you're going yeah. to Miami. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're getting we're getting flown down to Miami to hang out with wow. Destiny. Wow. So, Incredible. who knows? Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be like there's all sorts of interesting. You know, we're doing alchemy here. Yeah. And the more the more like ingredients we have the more we can mix them together and make something that nev- no one's ever seen before it's pure spectacle and there's something primally exciting about that it's like it's 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 as it's as human as a crossover episode yeah is it cool. pure spectacle it there's a there's a spectacle element of it like you know when yeah, you see sure. like oh oh my god jordan peterson and destiny debated in person yeah then there's like hope oh, I, I know these characters yes yeah. i want to see the alchemy of it yeah the yeah. hope the hope that i would have would be like something kind of like it is an interesting conversation right, right? or yeah. at the very least like it's like there's some kind of interesting uh insight or whatever like a lot of the times it would I, it would probably be hard to like make it actually like uh uh something like <laughs> like academically stimulating or whatever but mm-hmm. like obviously the main 
the main part would just be making it funny. Even like if it's not directly academically stimulating, it'll still be academic. It'll be all like on a meta level academically stimulating. I see. There, there will be see, video essays about it. Yeah, yeah it would true. always be fascinating. Yeah. It, it, that's it, true. That's, it, a, that's a good point. Aiden yeah. Ross and Noam Chomsky would just be, does not matter what words they say. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to change each other's mind. That's just so fucking yeah. fascinating. I mean, the Zizek Peterson debate is pretty largely viewed as like disappointing or not that interesting, but like the mm. amount of dissection it's experienced mm. is. Totally, like there's, yeah. it absolutely caused a lot of. Con- oh, Aiden, Aiden Ross is in Toronto right now, like really? as we speak. Yeah, let's go try and meet up with. Get him here. Okay, let's all DM him right now. Yeah, real quick. We're gonna get Noam Chomsky and Aiden Ross on this couch, and Noam right Chomsky now. is going to die. We're flying. Have you ever out seen Ali G collapse? Yes, Ali G. That would be like an Ali G clip. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> Booyaka show. Okay, if Aiden, Aiden Ross is in Toronto. Who else is in like uh-huh. Jonathan Peugeot, like John Verveke? Like, who is in? Who is a philosopher that we could probably like? If we're like, hey, this is really important. Like, just you, you want to throw away like two hours of your day just to come do this hmm. right now? Who could it be? So, in we, Toronto? okay, here's the thing, right? Like, do you think you would get that much out of them if they just like did a podcast talking to each other, or do you, like, because in my head it would be like if one of them shadows the other for a week and then yeah, that, that's an ideal circumstance. But like, of course, give a, give yes, a good documentary de- style. You're, you're correct. Like yeah. dealing with what we got, what we got. With, that would but be dealing, yeah. But I'm, I'm always, yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking first and foremost, like, what do we have access to? Facts, yeah. But yeah. like, yeah, like. It, this is why, as well, you shouldn't be afraid of taking money. Because if you are someone with good ideas and you can use the money for cool things. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, well, the only uh, hang up in my head to uh, taking money is that it always comes with a catch in my head, true. usually. But, like, you yeah. know, that's true just always. Like, even if you take it from your audience, you know, there's a little bit of a catch. Like, uh, not as much as, like, a producer, like a fucking Harvey Weinstein saying, like, yeah, you got to keep the... Not blocking the door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, no, yeah, but... um. There's certainly are if you, if you get that billionaire money, there will be catches to it, and yeah. it's just a question of how how many how how willing are you to go through those catches? And right. the answer is, I will do unspeakable things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much money are we talking? How much would you need to manifest forty your... bucks? <laughs> <laughs> I will nice. do anything for forty dollars. Oh shit! Sell my soul, sell my uh, grandmother for two hundred dollars. We're gonna have a productive oh. post show, dude. Man, I'm so excited about this fucking philosopher. <laughs> idea that is that is a really funny yeah, i like that one how has no one thought about that before okay two questions before we wrap up one do you have any advice we have, for... so, we have so much time well oh, i got you, a, you have I stuff got to do call. i got a call oh what's about your call uh it was at three but i knocked it back to four but i'd like to have some time before it okay okay two questions uh one do you have advice for people who are starting long projects projects that are going to take like a year or longer Anything you wish you knew before you started? Uh, read about project management. Hmm. So you can, like Kokonara was talking about earlier, there's systems. A lot of times you, you systematize because you that's from learning. Like I'm definitely way like way faster at doing stuff than I was like two, three years ago. Because I have a bunch of projects under my belt now. Um, but you gotta have some strategies, organizational skills. There's as much as like passion and brute force can get you somewhere um you can also make it a lot easier in yourself without sacrificing um passion or your artistic vision as well um so you know learn some responsibility skills <laughs> hmm. is there any project management books that you read uh, i just watch youtube videos mostly right, right, okay yeah. Hmm. Oh. yeah is there a project management for youtubers guideline no that should exist no, I just I just took the same like the principles from it, you know. Um, but uh, schedule, lots of scheduling. Scheduling scheduling helps because when you're working on something for a year, sometimes you you don't realize it, but a month went past since the last time you said that it's going to take another two months. Oh right. Uh, yeah. So That's best thing I figure I figured out for myself and for the people that pay me money is deadlines and externalizing those deadlines and saying. You're gonna sh- you want to get this thing done? Okay, just show it to me. Show it to me in however long you think it's gonna take, plus a week. I'll give you an extra week and then show it to me. You know, and then can you can you actually show it to me? And then if you can't, then what went what went wrong? Let's talk about that. Mm. Five hundred dollars a month. Uh, Greg Gavar Art. You can sign up, and I will do that for you. But nice. you can also do it for free with any of your friends at any time. You, advice. Um... Yeah, what Oki was saying is facts. I uh, I realized, and it's still kind of the case in my life, but like, I'm just so disorganized mentally, and it is because I don't have systems set up. I'm doing that now actively. Like, I'm I'm trying to actively dial in, like, because I don't know. A big part of productivity is uh, 
adapting to your own fucking uh psychology right mm -hmm. like it, it's hard to be like purely logical or like uh to operate with peak efficiency you know what i mean like a robot uh and so yeah i've just i've just basically you set up a system you see if you actually stick to it and then if you don't you kind of adapt it mm. um that's what i'm kind of working on now and uh yeah what was the it was advice for people working on long projects who are good they're thinking about starting like a year-long project holy shit okay do um people think i'm gonna do it for a year yeah that's, that's the like, thing i always think like dude like the whole time i thought it was gonna be done within a month like mm. it's it's uh you don't i don't think constantly saying one one more month one more month yeah yeah probably two months yeah, okay, here's the here's the advice is um do a screening, okay? Do a screening in front of peers that you have you respect, okay? This is like the biggest thing that actually successfully made me cycle through certain edits and certain mm. like actually bringing coherence to what I was doing. Yeah. Was um we organized basically a viewing uh, you know, and I knew, you know, a lot of people would be there that I respected and whatever. And so obviously I needed to bring them something coherent that is, you mm -hmm. know, in my head, at least impressive. And so that was like a deadline where it's like, oh, it doesn't have to be uploaded to YouTube at this point. But like but you are going to show your peers. I am going to show people I respect. Yeah. This yes. is something we discovered naturally through the studio. We, yes. we figured out screenings. That's a really good idea. And you did a screening yeah. for that video. You did the first 15 minutes. Mm. You did, uh, I think, multiple screenings. Yeah. Um, CJ, the X did the screening. For their Jordan Peterson video, they're still yeah. working on one dime. Was one, one dime, did, one dime did, did some streaming. So uh, yeah, and I actually bought this very projector just so that we could do your screening. Hell yeah, dude! Um, and Hell this yeah. has been a useful, this has been a useful tool to buy actually because we we screen, we screen all the time. We do when we do movie nights with it and stuff. So yeah, screening. Yeah, no okay. facts. Yeah, I, I I I agree with that, it, and it's like a fun deadline. Yeah, and it has to be people that you don't want to disappoint. Yeah, if this makes yeah. sense. Like there's. It's not that you don't respect them, like, but like your brothers or your parents, like y you, they've probably seen the worst parts of you in whatever ways or whatever, right? Like, uh, it's like you're almost too familiar, so like you can show them something shitty that you did, and like you won't be that phased by it, whatever. But yeah, when it's like your peers or people you respect or whatever, uh, I think it takes it to another level where it's like, okay, I can't fuck up my, you know, my <laughs> the whole like uh, perception or whatever. So yeah. Yeah, this work for me. That's that. That's I think uh, I was talking to CJ about um, the Jordan Peterson project and uh, deadlines and stuff. And one thing they were saying to me was like the deadline only works when there's like something like fun and, and beautiful about the something to look forward to, mm -hmm. which is like not just being motivated by the shame of missing it, but also the excitement of showing this thing. We forget that we're making videos for people sometimes because we, we spend yeah. so much time alone in our rooms just like editing it. That it's like, okay, wait, if I'm showing this to someone, what are the key points? Like, what are, what are, I'm, how do I explain this in a way where I'm not getting lost in the minutia? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, uh, I think that, uh, it is fun to make videos. Controversial opinion. I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is fun. It's just, uh, sometimes you make it not fun for yourself, whatever. Sometimes it's like, okay, I, I have to finish this. Like, it's all, you know, culminating, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, like I'm, I am, uh, choosing to do it. You know what I mean? Like I do want to do it. I do feel like it's worth it. Whatever it's building towards something, right? Like I'm viewed as like consistently trying to evolve and whatever. So mm. yeah, it's uh, cope. There's definitely a lot of side questing that occurs and uh, a lot of, a lot of ups and downs, but I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. regret it. Yeah. yeah. Question two. Do you think you guys will ever do this again? Almost definitely. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Eventually, yeah. It's going to happen again. I know it. <laughs> Are you, you're actively doing this again, aren't you? <laughs> like without yeah. intending to? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the goal is to do it better and smarter. Yeah. And more efficient. How long are you in this one for? How many months? Was it? I don't know. Mm, Half a year? Uh, no, no. Uh, this one, uh, I wouldn't even say, let's say two months. Yeah. Two months? Yeah, let's say two months. Yeah. Are you asking how long it'll take? How long have you been? Oh yeah, two months. Yeah, about. A bit too much. Okay. And how long will it be? How long will it be? That's actually just too difficult. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Ask me in another time, maybe. Yeah. But you know, yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. You will do it again. I'm gonna do it again once I have more money and more um, ability, wiggle room mm. to do it again. Yeah. Uh, but right now I'm going to stick to the uh, posting something every two months for a while. Um, taking, taking sponsorships. Taking sponsorships. And then earning that, earning that cash. Yeah. And then I could do a big 
thing where I, you know, I have more freedom to um, travel more and pay my cameraman mo more and pay the composer more and mm. do the same thing, but smarter and better and more efficiently. Mm. You know, this is going to get seen by like 50K people probably. Uh, sponsor your, your artists. If you're a fucking crypto dude, if you're some fucking guy out there with more money than he knows what to do with and uh, that he didn't earn... Uh, <laughs> they did. They didn't really earn the You're money. Immediately negging your potential sponsor. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't earn the money, make the money worthwhile and fucking sponsor people. If you like Oki and you like what Oki does, ten thousand dollars. You know, Oki, take me a, a long way. If that's a drop, that's a drop in the bucket for someone with like two, three, four million dollars liquid. That like you know, a lot of people have. People we know have that. Patreon.com slash Oki's yeah. weird stories. Ten k. Uh, Fuck yeah, dude. You want to see Oki make a fucking something that blows the last documentary out of the water? T you know, twenty fifteen k. Drop yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. And don't give it to someone who's already making $150,000 per month on Patreon. Please. They don't need it. They don't need it. They don't true. need it. That's true. It's not going to change their life. That's a good yeah. point. Uh -huh. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, that's true, though. What he's saying is true. Like, I've had, I've had decent sized, like, donations or whatever people would say. Like, uh, and it's, it's fascinating how it's like instantly it's like, whoa, no rent, like, yeah. rent is covered this month. Or yeah. Whatever. Like, it's like, <laughs> this is, uh, it's, it helps. Like, it definitely helps. Like, uh, for sure. One thing about us, we're gonna use we're gonna use money to do cool things. Yeah, yeah. Every every dollar will be used properly. <laughs> every dollar is used properly. Just fucking ground beef and rent and YouTube and sex workers. Are you I, I'm putting it all in, all, all into sex raw? workers personally. Ground beef raw. Uh. Rent sex workers only fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs, uh. ketamine addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you just pull it out of your fucking bag? It's a little satchel, dude. Oh, that's nice, dude. I thought that was what's it's in a there. Satchel. A what? What's 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 in, what's in this? It's it's, it's uh, like moist. Uh, it's uh, Korean creatine powder. Oh my uh, goodness! I yeah. thought this was ketamine. What no, no. I was like, did you just pull out a fucking eight ball? Uh, you know, <laughs> Christian didn't want me to say this, but he is selling a limited edition version of his robot with Coke instead of snow in the globe. <laughs> that's. I'm surprised that you you're down to show it like that. And we are you. going to do that coke on a Patreon exclusive podcast, mm. um, as well as uh, many other drugs, including alcohol, which hurts my fingers. But I'm going to do it anyway. Cause we are doing Rogan's making me. We are we are doing Patreon exclusive hard drug episodes. Is yeah. This a Wait, joke? really? Yeah. yeah no, that's what? that's true. Every month we're going to do a Jesus. different hard drug. I think you need to stay away from. <laughs> that's <laughs> such a. Bad oh, idea. why? Because I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> okay. we'll oh, just, no. oh no! Oh yeah. no! No, it's like a, no yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably. Yeah, I'll do mushrooms and acid. you do coke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's yeah. it. We're talking about the inter the intersection of like celebrities and philosophers. The intersection of drugs. Damn. Where you just you just. We can do the autism schizophrenia of drugs. Yeah, that'd yeah. be fun. Okay, sure. But yeah. reverse it. I'm down. Yeah. Just let's get $300 worth of Coke. Oh. Okay, you guys can plan this off stream, okay? Are you just going to see Dre running down naked <laughs> down the Don Valley Parkway? Like, something I about think, this wow, Greg, is everything left. is everything. A sick what do you mean by that? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Things are only what they are. It's devolving, bro. I'm scared. Um, I think, I think if that was going to happen to me, it would have happened already. That's is that that what is that? That's the sunk cost fallacy, or what is that? It's, it's like definitely a fallacy it's of some a, kind. Fallacy of some kind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm 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 doing some fallacies here. If I were to die, I would have died already. So therefore, I'm gonna live forever. Yeah, mm. yeah. Based. <laughs> Damn, yeah, I'm committing. Um, okay. Anything else? Anything else we should cover? Um, we I want to buy a robot. Go buy a robot. Buy a robot. Go merch dot com. Buy that Custom. robot. Give buy Oki ten thousand dollars. Give Oki Subscribe 10, to our Patreon. Money. Subscribe to our Patreon. Oh. Um, never kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, unless nice. it's that's the thing for a really good reason. I have a bit of a sick, <laughs> a sick feeling in my stomach after this episode. I feel like we we ended on a strange note, and I feel like there's only one way to fix it. Yeah, take the creatine. Yes, no. To, I think there is only one way to fix it, and uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be murdering you. Oh, I, <laughs> okay, oh no, ready. okay. You know, we, we we talked about a lot of dichotomies here. Yeah, we did. Okay. But I think the main one was the art slop. Uh oh. The dichotomy. art slop horseshoe. Okay. Is there yeah. an art slop horseshoe? Wait. Art slop horseshoe. I think the art slop horseshoe exists. Okay. And you can make a bunch of slop, but also carry an artistic element to it. Okay. Um, Why do I have to die? This is just how we end our episodes. <laughs> okay, okay. But we've been um in the in the editing, we've been uh like taking out. We we sometimes fuck up the ending. And we're going to re-upload that to Patreon with, the, with us actually killing the guests properly. Because okay. sometimes it just cuts off in the middle. I think we did that like three times. Could this be a Mexican standoff? Uh, you, can, 
You can. Uh. <laughs> go to gocommerce.com and buy buy a bot. And that's the real, real horseshoe, horseshoe theory. theory. Bang.